know our audience is interested to hear what you feel is the advantage to transitioning to silicon photonics. Yeah, there's a couple advantages out there. It really comes down to bandwidth, uh, power, and kind of space and cooling uh, out there. As we move towards higher speeds and more advanced workloads, so we're just kind of throw AI into that. Uh, we don't have the ability to use the old technologies out there. We run into issues such as distance, amount of power in order to do the transmission out there, and kind of just the old era of compute and networking falls apart there with what we need to do uh, for these new network designs. And so silicon photonics bridges that gap and ultimately becomes the building block going forward of how networks connect. Why is the adoption of silicon photonics needed over uh, what we're seeing today as a solution? Yeah, we're starting to reach the end of road or end of life of some of the older technologies out there. We kind of call that copper interconnect or copper connectivity there. Uh, as we move up in speed, uh, whether that's uh, error rates or kind of drop packets out there, copper no longer cuts it uh, out there. And you see that in some of the designs. Uh, copper cables can be like just as big as the rack out there. Uh, so we have to move to silicon photonics uh, in order to get the distance back up and in order to get the capacity necessary to move forward. Okay, so to move forward, what do you think needs to happen? Uh, so what needs to happen is kind of twofold. One, there's obviously an R&D component to this, right? As you move from copper connectivity to silicon photonics, there's new engineering that's necessary. And then the second thing out there is we need vendors to come together and build a community, build standards out there so that we get interoperability and we don't have custom solutions across every vendor. So are you seeing like big trends that are happening? We are. So I think the big trend out there is kind of more in the sampling and proof of concept phase out there. Um, but vendors are starting to introduce silicon photonics, uh, proof of concepts out there or architectures. Uh, the key there is that the interconnect, uh, how we do that connectivity in AI is changing. And that's going to change how the CPU and GPU connect how that server itself connects to the outside world. Like everything is different with silicon photonics and that's where vendors are innovating. With AI, are there concerns over the data processing bandwidth needed to support uh, the advancement of AI? There is. Uh, AI is kind of one of those exponential increases in bandwidth or more than a step function increase of bandwidth out there. We used to talk about server connectivity measured and call it 100 gig, maybe 200 gig at the high end. Uh, when we talk about AI, we're talking about terabits per server. So it's just a whole new order of magnitude. And when you do that, uh, the old mechanisms out there in terms of connectivity or traditional NICs or traditional pluggable modules just no longer scale. It's just a very different problem and you need a different solution. So do you feel that silicon photonics will benefit the continued growth of AI? Yes, it will. So I think silicon photonics benefits, right? Because it's that next technology. So we know that's where we're going to end up. And then if we look at whether it's AI or traditional server, we'll see it rolled in in different layers, right? So you'll see silicon photonics introduced, we'll call it at the switch level, at the NIC level, at that GPU, CPU level, probably between memory there. So it's not just, hey, there's one silicon photonics out there and it solves everything. Uh, we're really going to see it layered into the approach there inside the server, in between servers, and then in the broader network. Yes. Yes, agreed.